Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to use Adobe InDesign to create templates to help speed up your imposition work. In front of me, I have a folder with some artwork, and I have this folder here for some templates. This is a library that I've built over the years. Different size uh, jobs, business cards, flyers, postcards, etc. And these are all InDesign template files. Now, the great thing about a template file is when you open it, by default, it comes in as an untitled document so that you don't accidentally overwrite your original template file. This basically allows you to constantly open up a, te a template, place in your PDF or PNG, whatever you're working with, export it as a, a PDF, and you don't accidentally ruin your original template. I have a, a template here for some business cards that are set to 24 up on a 12 by 18, but we're gonna go ahead and create one from scratch so I can show you my process. So I'm gonna go to new file. I'm gonna make sure my size is set to 12 by 18. One page only. Margins don't matter. Bleed and slug, we'll just leave it zero. So I'm gonna hit create. Here's my um, uh, pasteboard. I'm gonna go ahead and go to file, save as, and I'm gonna change this from a document to a template. And I'll just call this uh, 24 up biz card template. I'll hit save. You can see right now it comes up with the name of the file. But if I were to close this and then reopen it, it would come in as a untitled document. When I do all of my templates, I always set them up on my parent page. Now, the reason why is because sometimes I occasionally need multiple pages. And if you set up everything on page one, when you click a new page into your document, it will just look for whatever's on your parent page. So it won't carry over any of the uh, frames or any of the crop marks or anything else that you've set up. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use my parent page so that it will do that if I create multiple pages. So on my parent page now, I'm going to go ahead and go to my rectangle frame tool. The reason you use a frame tool is it basically works as a like an empty frame, uh, an empty picture frame, so to speak. I'm going to set my size to three and a half by two, which is going to be my finished business card size. And don't worry, we'll set up bleed in a few minutes. But after you set this up, when you place something in InDesign and you click one time in this graphic frame, it'll automatically just center everything up for you and place it uh, right in the middle exactly where you need it. So now we're going to set up our in position here. So I'm going to go up to edit, step and repeat. I want this to be eight rows by three columns. My vertical offset is going to be two and one eighth. That'll give us our nice little, nice little um, uh, one eighth inch gutter in between all of our cuts. And we're going to set our horizontal to 3.75, which is going to give us a quarter inch gutter in between the columns. And that's basically the maximum amount of cards that you could fit on a 12 by 18 size sheet. I'm going to highlight everything real quick. I'm going to go ahead and group this. So I just right, hit right click and hit group. I'm going to center this up on the page. I'll right click and ungroup it now. And then making sure that everything is selected. I'm going to go to my scripts here. And there's a uh, built in default script called crop marks. Double click that. By default, everything comes in as points. So I'm just going to go 0.25 and I'm going to call it IN for inches. And I want to go to uh, 0.125 for the offset. So I want to place the crop mark a little bit off from the edge of our finished business card here. Stroke weight, you just leave it at 0.25 point. If you want thicker crop marks for whatever reason, you can set this to, you know, a half, half point or whatever. I just leave it by default. Registration marks, don't need them, so I'll uncheck that. And then I'm going to make sure to do this around each individual object here, all 24 business cards. I'll click OK. And in a second here, it'll create my crop marks. If I go up to my um, layers panel here, you can see it's created a new layer for me called my crop marks. If I just hide that, you can see those crop marks disappearing. Now, 
It does also create these crop marks in the middle here, which I don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock my first layer and hide it so it's out of the way. And I want to go ahead and I'll drag around all of these interior crop marks here that I don't need and delete them. So just drag down here. Now that I have all the inside crop marks, not the outside crop marks, I'll go ahead and delete those off my spread. So I'll switch this back here, lock this up for the crop mark, and then go back to my first layer. Now, I don't have bleed in here, so I want to go ahead and set that up. So I'm going to delete these extra boxes here and go back to my first one. And I'm going to change this to 3 and 3 quarters by 2 and 1 eighth. So this will give me an extra bleed that I need for business cards that do have bleed in there. If the business card file doesn't have bleed, if it's just set to 3.5 by 2, it doesn't really matter because it's going to place it from the center position outward so we don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to go back to my step and repeat, and I'm just going to repeat it the same way that I did on the first part. So now I have my 24 up, 3 columns and 8 rows, and everything is set up with crop marks and with bleed that I can now place those um, PDFs into. So I'm going to go back to my first page. I'll just save this one more time, and I'm going to close this file out. I'm going to go back to my finder. And you can see here is the template that we just created. When I double click that to open it up, it comes in as an untitled document. And it's basically a placeholder now that we can start placing in our um, PDFs. So obviously you can save this or you can just leave it as an untitled document, whatever the case. But now we're going to go to File, Place. And I have these three business cards here in my artwork folder that we're going to go ahead and put those into our template. So I'll click open. I'm going to leave this set to the uh, crop to to the media. And I have this extra crop marks in here, um, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to place it in the center position of these frames. So I'll click OK, OK, OK. So now I have all three of my PDFs basically loaded in to the cursor here and ready to go. So all you want to do is click anywhere inside of these graphic frames and it'll place that PDF in there for you. So I'm just going to go one, two, three. Now I have my three PDFs placed in here and ready to now step and repeat down the columns here. So I'm going to make sure I have everything highlighted. I'm going to go to step and repeat and I'm going to make sure I have eight rows and in this case only one column because we're just going to be repeating downwards. So I click OK, I hit my W key real quick. You can see we have crop marks, we have bleed, we have three files that we placed in there and we've repeated this multiple times on a sheet. This is now ready to be exported as a PDF and sent over to a digital press for um, printing or if you have an offset press, you can send this over to your plate maker and send it as a, a you know four color process CMYK file. The good news is, is that if you have multiple layouts that you need to do, all you have to do is go into your pages here and just create a new page. Now everything is basically just as it was when we first started here. If I go back to File Place, let's just say I'm going to place that green card here in one time. I, I need to have this come in as 24 up. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my step and repeat and change this to three columns. And now I have this set up. And if I do this again, I can basically put in as many cards as I want. And if I wanted to, I can put it in different positions. Let's, let's say, for, for instance, you needed the um, blue card here to go in the first row. You could put it here. Or let's say you're creating a front and a back, right? So I'm going to go here and... I'll delete those two pages. I'll create a new um, page for our backer. And let's just say this is going to be our backside. Uh, let's just say this is going to be our backside for everything here. It's going to step and repeat. And now I have my front and my back all set up. So do a little pretending on that one. But basically, this is, this is a quick way to um, put in both the front and the back for a business card. This is going to work for any of these template files. So I have a couple uh, flyers up here. I have a flyer template right here. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and open this up. Again, it comes in as untitled. File place. I'm going to set these two flyers up here. I'll just click OK for both of these. And I'll just go click one, click two. And now these two are placed in and ready to go. So it allows you to do imposition work very, very quickly. I know there's software out there that, uh, like Fiery and Pose, that you can do this directly on the press. But sometimes you have to create some unique layouts, um, especially with business cards. Maybe there's different names. You, you don't want to um, create just a one up or a 24 up of one name. You want to use uh, maybe 24, uh, one up of 24 names, right? So it just allows you to quickly go through and do a lot of imposition work very, very fast. If you have any questions on how I created this or you want to see something in a little bit more detail, please leave them down in the comment section below. I hope someone's getting uh, some good use out of this, speeding up a little bit of your workflow. I know for me, it probably shaves off, you know, maybe an hour's worth of work having to create the document from scratch with all of the crop marks and everything over and over and over again. We do a lot of business cards at my job, and this basically just allows me to just breeze through a whole bunch of different orders very, very fast. Again, if you have questions, put them down below. As always, if you can leave a like, a share, subscribe if you haven't, um, I really appreciate, especially recently, there's been a lot of folks that have subscribed within the last like 30 days, so I really, really appreciate that. If you wanna to give a little bit more thanks to the channel, Please check out my Patreon. There's a free member sign up, or if you want to support even more, it's only $5 a month. I do have some items for sale over there, including some pre flights, um, some uh, different little tidbits that are pre press related. So check it out if you, um, if you can. But as always, if you just leave that like and subscribe, that's the best way to support the channel. Thanks again for watching, folks. I hope you get good use out of it. And until next time, take it easy.